Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. <laughs> oh, hey, what's going on, everybody? Wow. Uh, welcome to Talking Beards. This episode is probably going to be great. Probably. Oh, probably. It's going to be the best <laughs> one of today. Oh my gosh. I'm Aaron D. Johnson. Thank you for tuning in tonight. This is episode number 191 of the live show. This is going to be episode number 269 of the podcast. And tonight we are just going to dive deep into uh, the National Beard and Mustache Championships. We're going to talk about the beard chain and we're going to talk to best in show for the 2022 National Beard and Mustache Championships, Mr. Jono Gross. Are you excited about tonight, Scott Sakura? I am. Jonah's one of my most favorite guys in the bearding community. As we were talking earlier, before he, after he left, after we talked to him earlier, we were talking great praise about him and how just like he's like literally like one of the sweetest, most delightful, like kindest guys that we've met in in the bearding community. And every time that we get to like be around him, it's just like we get graced by an angel. Like and extremely gullible. Yeah. No, he's not. Stop. Yeah, he, he always looks down at his shirt when you're like, Hey, look at your shirt. And he's like, Oh, what's down there? And you punch him in the face every time. <laughs> I know. That's why I didn't want, want to go to nationals this year because I knew he was going to be there. And if I would have went and I would have gotten him real good, I would have knocked his mustache oh, just yeah. enough off a of kilter that he would have been done. He would, he would have been done. Oh my gosh. Jonah's, relative is here <laughs> jonathan who's jonathan jonathan is that we, what we've been saying wait a long minute this whole time. whoa oh God. well i like this i'm writing it down <laughs> <laughs> who's this jono person he's gone now jonathan oh is yeah. an angel he is oh but yeah no so God, but anyways jonathan. we have we have jonathan on the show with us tonight he's probably gonna get mad at us now and not want to talk to us anymore well, jonathan's mom said that we can call him jonathan so oh that's that's probably what's gonna happen we need to know what his <laughs> middle name is so if he starts getting out of line we can go jonathan <laughs> james gross get yeah, back in yeah. line diane what what's jonathan's middle name uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> Coleman, <laughs> boy, your mom's really throwing you under the bus tonight. My gosh, this is amazing. This is the be- like. Yeah. I just want to bring his mom on here and be like. So, what was Jonathan like as a child? Was it was he? Ooh, J J C Gross. I like it. Wow. That's pretty good. That's his, is that his new nickname? J C Gross it can be. <laughs> Jonathan C Gross. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, uh, yeah, welcome to Talking Beards tonight. We're going to be talking to Jonathan C. Gross uh, coming up here shortly. But there is lots to cover with the National Beard at the 2022 uh, Honest Amish Presents the National Beard Mustache Championships. Uh, Aaron attended it, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about some of the stuff before we bring in Jono. Uh, but yeah, so everyone go over to, uh, talkingbeards.com If you want to learn a little bit, a little bit more about the show, or if you want to watch the show live, we're currently live over there. Uh, but if you want to interact with the show, we need to have you go over to either our YouTube page or Facebook page. Maybe if you're into Twitch and you want to go over there, you can go participate in our chat room there, but, uh, we want you to go over to either Facebook or YouTube. You can participate in the fun with everyone, even Jono's moms here. Uh, we can have some fun with her, but yeah. So, uh, welcome everyone tonight. We got a great crowd going on. We have uh, the Sean Duff is here. Can you believe oh that? God, Concho Sean all the way home. Duff, Duff, the Duff man. I know. As his, as his friends call him. 
But yeah, so how how are you doing tonight, Aaron? Dude, you know, I'm honestly extremely exhausted. I I don't know. This is probably the most exhausted I feel like I've been leaving a beer competition. Like we almost didn't even leave Casper on Sunday. We we genuinely thought about getting a hotel for one more night and just staying and just laying there. But I was like, no, let's just head on home. So huh, we're we're home. We got home about three a.m. So. I don't know. It's it's just been a a blurry blurry day today. Well, and this was another thing that we never got a chance to talk about was the Circus of Whiskers too when you were in Detroit. We cuz we oh, missed yeah. last we missed last week. Um yeah, just a bunch of circumstances happened so we missed the show last week and we never got a chance to talk with Aaron about the Circus of Whiskers. How was that? I will say the Circus of Whiskers was amazing and it was in a new venue that was a lot smaller, but it was smaller okay. in, a, in a good way, and it was hard to get from the back of the room where I was set up to the stage. Like it was like one of those, like you know, you've been to you know shows and stuff, and you can't get to the stage because there's so many people, and you know, it, it was like that. And it That's was a good problem, dude. It was so nice. It, it's been a long time since I've been to a beer competition that was that packed in there, and it was super cool. It was. I feel good. like. The Detroit Good. guys always throw a competition like that, though. I feel like every time you go to Detroit to their events, they're like that. Yeah, it's always a good time. And but this was this was different. There, this one just, as the kids say, this one hit different and <laughs> in in a good way. So it, it was a good time in Detroit. And looking forward to next year, they'll be back at that venue. And then the year after that, it'll be Great American. So Detroit's got a lot of stuff going on. Whoa, Aaron, can you believe that? She says this year, this year was. was- intimate it was intimate that is a perfect word for detroit it was very or is intimate. it in time mate i don't know what did you do for the last two weeks got sequoia oh my gosh um uh, not much uh worked quite a bit and as i was telling aaron i i i, I knocked the dust off my uh nhl 2020 game and got got my career started but missed half the season due to concussion and uh it, sprained ankle it was like you jumped into the game I felt like it. <laughs> they the, just they just beat the brakes off of you. Yeah, they, they like, really this did. New guy, let's break his ankles and give him a concussion. And goodness, Scott Sakura. Well, maybe you shouldn't be a professional hockey player. Maybe I'm that- not. I just play one on TV, and apparently, I can't even make it through that. But yeah, I really, really uh, have not not much to report. I just been kind of laying low, just working and laying low. That's about it. And uh, nothing wrong with that. No, it's that it's that time of year, you know, and I don't know if a lot of you guys saw that I had posted a previous uh, interview that we had done a couple of years ago about Movember and uh, just kind of noticing uh, signs of depression and stuff. And like I've always told everyone, I've been very open and honest with everyone about dealing with like seasonal depression and stuff like that. And it's just it's that time of year for me. And I'm kind of going through that funk right now. And um just you and know trying not to, even an uptown funk no it's it not is, it's the bad kind of funk <laughs> yeah but yeah so i'm just kind of dealing with that you know it just it just involves a lot of just trying to just get through the day and and you know maintain and once i you know and and, and living in a whole different area too and going through this i didn't think i was going to really go through it this year just because you know, now where I'm at, it's sunny all the time. And that's just- kind of what I thought. I thought maybe it was like the winter blahs in, in northern Ohio, but you're you're still getting the, the winter blahs in Austin, Texas. Yeah, and well, it's been gray and cold. Like I'm like, so maybe I'm- that's it. Maybe in the next couple of weeks when spring gets there in Austin, then you can you'll be fine again. Yeah, I know. I mean, I like this. But yeah, so but I would like for you to be fine again. Yeah, you know, I'll be fine. I just, you know, it's it's just it's just me, and it's just that time of the year. And also, I think another thing affecting it too is, you know, like I I had also kind of shared with everyone a few weeks ago too about quitting drinking, and I'm 93 days in today. Good job, buddy. And thank you. And this time of year always would be the ramp up of like. Christmas beers and Oktoberfest beers and you know you just always kind of like I would always overindulge this time of year because there'd be so many great beers to drink and then of course 
you know, you're outside in the cold and you get back inside and you have a nice warm bourbon and it's just like, what's up, Marty? Yeah. Yeah, man. Sit back and hang out. We're, we're going to, we'll go live for the next like 50 minutes and, and you're, you're going to laugh your head off. Probably. Oh, probably. <laughs> well, Look, he even changed his name down there. That was nice. Oh, look at that. That's that's crazy that he changed his name like that. That's weird. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean, so that that's what's kind of been, it? you know, a heads up on what's been going on with me in a little bit. But I mean, definitely Aaron's the star of tonight, and he's going to share a lot about, you know, nationals because there was a lot of stuff that did happen. You know, you know anyone that's in the know that's been following social media should know that one of the biggest competitions just happened this past weekend. And, uh, you know, Aaron was there, he was part of it. And, you know, so tell us, you know, there, there was a couple big notes in there, but, uh, why don't you start about you a little bit about your trip and then we'll, we'll bring in our guest Cause yeah, that- so we, we left, when did we even leave? We left Wednesday, and drove 12 hours, got to Columbia, Missouri, and stayed the night. And then we drove 13 more hours, and we got to Casper late. We left Tuesday. Holy crap. Yeah, we left Tuesday. That that explains why we didn't do Taco Beers last week. So, yeah, Tuesday, 12 hours, and then 13 on Wednesday. And then, uh, yeah, we got to Casper Wednesday night, hung out. We went to go see uh, the new Black Panther movie with uh, Andrew and Kara and Corey. I think that was it. Natalie, that was that was all of us. Yeah, that was all of us. And then we all went to that was our pub crawl. So everybody went to the pub crawl on Thursday night and it was like one degree in Casper. And uh might have even gotten to two, who knows? But it it was uh it was not warm. So we we did the our own thing. We went to Perkins and ate, and then we went to the movies, and then we went back to the hotel and hung out in the lobby and it was a good time. That was that was our Thursday, but Friday we got up early and 9 a.m. we were all setting up the Honest Amish booth at the uh, Ford Wyoming Center. And dude, that was so cool. It was so cool being on that floor and setting up on in a, an arena. It was a freaking arena. And uh, they play they, hockey there. They they play all the sports there, all of them. Uh, I think Snoop Dogg is going to be there. Snoop Dogg is going to be there in like two weeks on the stage that we were on. Wow. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, so we did that Friday and then Friday night, the, the, uh, the pre party that is circling the interwebs today. It has been wild. So yeah, we, we did a, a five person or five category beard competition. And the first category was the mustaches. And, uh, I was lucky to be one of the judges. I thought until I saw the mustache category, <laughs> Dude, I don't know where all these mustaches came from this weekend, but a Friday night, they just stuck all the mustaches in one category, and it was the hardest judging thing I've ever had to do because it was just such a wide variety of amazing mustaches in that category. But we got through it, and we we finished up the competition, and then the, the, the big thing that everyone waited on all night, the world record uh, beard chain. I think the was 62 ish feet and we were going to beat that record. So they, how many meters? Uh, 32. (laughs) That was so funny. That was a fun (laughs) article. (laughs) Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, we set up the beard chain and it was chaotic. You know, we, we thought we were all going to kind of hang out and then get clipped together for a couple minutes and be done. But we, we stood there for about an hour. And we, everybody got linked up or, you know, hanging out and then everybody was too close. Then we tried to get people to move. And then <laughs> the first the place won a plate. Oh, what kind of plate? <laughs> it was a plate. Wyoming. Hmm, okay. <laughs> it was just a Wyoming. He, that's what he wanted. He wanted the plate. Um, But Maybe yeah, we, Jonathan we got all, can show us his plate when he comes on. He didn't get a plate. What? I know, man. Oh, that was know. Friday, Friday nights. Friday night, there was the there was three books and a plate, and ah, then right, first right. first place of the veterans got a some sort of envelope with something in it. I didn't. I don't Ten hundred thousand dollars. I think it was a million. Pretty sure. <sighs> I know, but we got through uh, the the beer chain. We got all set up, and then we finally got all measured and linked and everybody was good and ready. And then we counted to 30. Then we, we all 
cheered and we were excited and hopefully it all goes well and the Guinness people sign off on it and then we're all world record holders. But have you I, seen this? I heard, yeah, I heard that you guys all had to hold your breath. I can see that yep. uh, Jason is uh -huh. really struggling there holding his breath. I think he's actually holding a fart in, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. Geez, my bad. Yeah, he was like, if he, he didn't want to fart that close to corn, so... Yeah. Corn's like, don't you do it? Don't you fart? And he's like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I think that's what's going on there. But no, this is the picture. This is the the top picture that's on top of all the articles that has absolutely been spread like wildfire all day long. Yeah, um, that, I mean, <laughs> Sonny had a great time on Friday night too. He told me he was sad he couldn't stay for the festivity on on Saturday. But this dude that really looked a lot kind of like Eric Show, but like way longer hair and stuff was there Friday night. It was pretty cool. Yeah, Duff, you could have added an extra. Well, if I would have been there too, we could have added an extra um, probably See? eight or six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight feet. If we would, both of us would have been there, we would have had an extra eight feet to that. Well, whole as the kids say, there's always next year. Yeah, there is. And there we is. don't know any information about where next year is going to be, but you make sure that you tune into Talking Beards because you guarantee that you guys will hear it here probably pretty close to being the first place to break the news to you. So I would hope so. Brian Brian uh hopefully will leak me that information and then I'll you know casually bring it up on the show before I'm supposed to. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> and get in trouble like I did last year or earlier this year with worlds. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot where that is anyway. So it's, it's in Germany in June. We can talk oh. about it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that, Brian. He's here. Maybe. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it was a good time, dude. It, it, we could go on and on about this whole event. The, just Friday night was super cool. And then Saturday was, it was long. It was a long day, but my gosh, what a, what an amazing event. And then just pairing with another event, uh, the booze and bacon had just so many more people for that three or four hour slot that just, you, you, so many new people got involved or not necessarily involved, but got, you know, introduced introduced is the word i'm looking for to the beer community and uh, so many first time casper people were competing and didn't surprise me any because th i've never seen a town be so involved embrace a beer competition dude like anywhere we went we went to perkins the waitress knew about it we went to walmart uh, two people stopped me and was like you here for the beer competition you like, should have said no What's a beard competition? But no, man, like everywhere <laughs> we went, the people at the airport knew about it. everybody had some sort of interaction that of someone that knew this was here. And that's amazing. I think that was super cool. And I'm already looking forward to next year's event. And hopefully it's bigger and better than Casper because this one was super good. All right. Well, let's let, let's yeah, let's get our uh, guest in here because he looks like he's about ready to to sign out because he's been sitting back there for. Oh, my gosh. Well, we can't let the best in show winner sign out. We need to hurry up and get this going. I so uh, I didn't ask where he was. I think he's in Phoenix. Is that right? Are you in Arizona right now? Utah? He's talking like we he, can hear him. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. So, all right, let's go. So tonight we have from Utah. Currently, uh, he loves hats. He loves doing backflips, and uh, he loves looking good with his little mustache. He is best in show winner, Jonathan C. Gross. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you doing? Good. I've been waiting to address the name, the name thing, uh, but I'm doing good. Um, uh, I'm in Salt Lake City, so I drove up from Arizona, stopped in Denver, uh, because my sister just had a baby. Um, visit with them and then went to Casper and kind of doing a loop to Salt Lake City. I'll be in Las Vegas tomorrow, back to Phoenix. So, are you driving? Yep, good for uh, you. You're not cheating. I usually drive with my dog, so I factor in what the price of travel, you know, flying and boarding him versus driving. So, they do usually... you ever do you ever let him drive? <laughs> no, he sleeps. Oh, <gasps> guess who's here right now? <laughs> Who? My oh sister, my. Jenny Hunt, the Jenny Hunt, the Jenny Hunt is here. My God, wow, your whole family. How does that make you tonight? feel, Jonathan? Honestly, here. Uh, 
you know, my, my, I've been going to competitions and I feel like this might be the first one where my parents actually got excited. Um, you know, my mom like is trying to plan a family trip around like worlds now. Uh, you know, <laughs> That's awesome, man. I've never really left uh, North America. You know, I've been to like Cancun and Canada, but not really uh, mm-hmm. overseas, we'll say. So I think it'd be fun. Um, so is that your plan? You're going to go to Germany? I think, I think our family's, uh, I think our family's going to to plan something around it. Yeah. Are you, um, you going to stick I guess to that's your... my announcement. <laughs> there it is. Breaking news on Talking Beards tonight. Jonathan C. Gross will be going to Worlds. Are you going to be in with the his natural mom and category? his sister? Well, my dad will probably come too. But um, you know, I uh, I had a hard time deciding whether to do um, natural or styled. Um, but the main reason why I, I got into natural is because at uh, the Austin. Um, competition i actually couldn't find like my products in my blow dryer uh so i just had to do natural um and then i won so then i was like all right this is this is telling me something um and then you know coming in friday i drove up from denver so i wasn't able to compete on friday um i didn't get to see all the mustaches on stage i'm sure that was probably a joy to see it was Um, amazing especially because there's some competitions where there's not really many mustaches at all. Um, and for everybody to come together, it was cool, but I kind of got to see what everyone was doing. And I was like, man, if I were to style this thing, I would have to have it on the money. And I haven't styled my mustache in probably, you know, two years. So I was like, that'd be kind of hard to just pull out of the bag and, and beat all the, beat all those guys. Well, I think you, as Andrew put you, you chose wisely for your category for this weekend. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've had, um, nationals on my radar for quite a while, probably like eight months. Um, I usually will cut the curls. Um, but this time I was like, Nope, I gotta let it grow. I have to let it grow. And, you know, day by day, when you wear a natural mustache, it can get in a hundred directions. Um, so it's been, it's been tough to get to this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's here. So will that be what you do? Will you cut your curls off now and let it grow back for worlds or what's your well, plan? I was thinking about it because snowboarding season's right here around the corner. Well, I mean, you can't but, cut them off too soon. Cause you've got all these, these media obligations. I know. I'm, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not doing it anytime soon. I was actually upset because I was trying to grow like a pretty good uh, beard. I, I have a good like partial uh, naturally, but it doesn't come in the sides and I had to shave uh, for the competition. And, you know, it is no shave November. So I kind of felt guilty doing that. But uh, well, you didn't shave your mustache. So that's the yeah, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Now, just to kind of give everyone uh, like a little like, I guess, tutorial about the difference between the style, the natural mustache and what you're talking about using product and everything like your mustache is just naturally like that because you've pretty much as it's grown you've trained it by every day just brushing it and kind of just curling it so your your mustache like lays like that naturally correct yeah so uh i use a round brush and a blow dryer every morning after i get out of the shower um and it holds pretty well right where it is i've tried to do like the dolly i've tried to do you know um the english and all that but Every time I try to go somewhere else, my mustache is just fighting back to get to this shape. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a trip. So your mustache um, owns you. Yeah. It's a wild <laughs> ride. It got me on this podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fun. Do you, do you use any oils or bombs on a regular basis or you just so completely leave it like it is? I, I just heard somebody say that hair shampoo is supposed to take the oils out and then you know beard shampoo is supposed to keep the oils in and i i mean i just heard that this weekend and i was like that makes a lot of sense um so i'll use oil um i i don't really use like a specific one there's there's so many that you start picking up after Mm -hmm. you start going to competitions (laughs) you know you start to get bags of it but um i'll oil it up probably maybe once or twice a week just to get it some hydration. All you need. Yeah. And uh it holds well. 
Look at this. See, Ortney's here. She said that you're a the sweetest guy and deserving of her a hair. Is, her hair is like amazing. It is long. I mean, it's amazing. Ooh. Um, Congrats, oh, Jonathan. Here. Do you like this? Do you like that? We're gonna make people call you Jonathan. All right, so let's get to it. Oh yes, uh, yes. Let's get to this. My dad, Jonathan C. Gross. My dad would always call me John O'Man my whole life growing up. He'd be like John O'Man, like my whole life. Then when um, I got to kindergarten, they asked me what my name was, and I said John O'Man, and the <laughs> <laughs> teacher wasn't having it. Um, so then she's like, "All right, we're just going to cut off the man, and you'll go by Jono." So um, my whole life throughout school, everybody called me Jono, and it just kind of stuck. Uh, my mom still calls me Jonathan. That's why that's, that's how it popped back up. But that's the story of how Jonathan got to Jono. So Jonathan. your mom is like the only person that actually calls you Jonathan. Yeah. Yes. Until tonight. Sometimes. Until, yeah. Sometimes. Until now. <laughs> well, we ruined that for you. Sorry. Oh, no, it's know. fun. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the world of Talking Beards, where we give everyone nicknames and butcher their names, even if we know how to say it perfectly fine. We just add, like, m- bunches of flair. We'll just put it that flair way. Flair or flavor to your name, yeah. you know? It's like, <laughs> just gives it something extra. And your yeah. mom just helped us out, so we didn't even have to come up with anything. So, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Adam Adam says, best competitor I've ever gone up against. Congratulations once yes. again. Yes, so he almost took me out pretty quick. Uh, you know, he was in natural mustache as well. He won the night before on Friday. Um, and I mean, his mustache can be seen from a mile away. Uh, it's just, he's just, it's so thick and, and it's dark and you can just, you could always see it. So, um, when we went up on stage on Saturday, I mean, I was, I was worried. Um, but you know, I ended up pulling through and then that led all the way to best in show. So, that was uh, that was probably the only threat I had. Well, I guess everybody everybody's mustaches and beards look great. I I can't believe that I I won. It was it was a treat. It's honestly unbelievable. So I just I just want to hear hear how this this very thing like what did you how did what did you think when you won best in show? Like what was the first thing that went through your mind? Well, what I didn't plan on it. I mean. When I walked past the judges, I was like, there's so many, you know, there's so many good, there's so much, so many good competitors on It's the best of the best. Yeah. So the main thing I kept doing is I just went to the judges and I was like, just remember I'm in the natural category. You know what I mean? Just because, you know, everybody styled up and I just, I was like, that has to be known to the judges on their last look. Um, and then, you know, when we got on stage, they pulled Levi, Levi down first, who had groom mustache. A beautiful. Then, like yeah, not, he, that was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It, it was there wasn't a hair out of place. Nope. And uh then they called me and I'm like, oh shoot, they're gonna call another mustache person. That's, like, that's honestly what I thought. I was like, I thought it was gonna be Bob. I thought it was gonna be you yep. three mustaches for best in show. Yeah, so I was ready for that. And uh I mean honestly best in show comes down to a three-way tie and then my numbers called and i'm like what the heck's going on and then we're all standing there in front of the judges and then there's a a two-way tie between between uh me and levi so i'm just like you know for a solid three minutes i'm just going through the ringer my heart's racing you know Mm -hmm. i like a lot of adrenaline sports but that definitely had my adrenaline going to a whole different level um and then, you know, my number was called and all I remember is just kind of being in the air. I don't even remember being lifted in the air. You, you know? got lifted. Yeah, I was just there. All of a sudden I was in the air and I was like, you know, I grabbed the book and the uh, and the big ribbon and I was just holding it in the air. I don't even know what I was, I was holding for, uh, you know, I was just, You're just like, it, I'm holding stuff. It could be it a severed head. Yeah, it was, it was pretty <laughs> overwhelming. I, I was kind of like, what just happened, you know? Um, so it was cool and it happened at a decent time too. I mean, this was a really early, uh, competition, um, and it ended at a good time too. So it allowed everybody to hang out afterwards. It was, it was the best competition I've, I've ever been to. That's exactly what I was about to say. That was the rumor on the street was it was a three-way tie, but then they were like, 
who's going to be the easiest to lift? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, right. and then that that was the 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 deciding factor. So <laughs> congratulations on being the smallest one on stage. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Here, here's a question. Now let's, let's take this back a couple. Is this your first nationals or you've competed before? My correct. First competition ever was nationals. Oh, um, in what Richmond. Year was that? oh wow. So great yeah. American. Oh yeah. The great American. That's not nationals. Mm. Don't I make it, you just, mix it up. Cause wow. You just got yelled at you over that. Wait, wait, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, He's well, that was that was my first competition. I guess this is my first nationals. To be honest, um, weren't you weren't you in Scranton? Nope. I thought you wow. were in Scranton. So what? All right, now just the, all you and, as, hat wearing dudes all look alike. I could have swore you were in Scranton. Mustache guys, <laughs> but, but they don't look like that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> My bad. Um, all right. But but as Aaron said that he noticed that there were a lot of first timers that were there this year. Now, all right. So Great American, that was four years ago in Richmond. Four or five uh, years ago. Yeah, I believe right? so. Now, why? What compelled why was that your first one? What compelled well, you? Honestly, it was really hard to find competitions. And for me, you know joining the community was tough. The only, the only mustache competition I really found online was that one. Um, so I just went to it and then you actually, you know, find out about all the, the regional that, Hey, thanks. Then you find that, then you find out about all the regional clubs and then like you start to understand it. Um, and then it made it a little easier, but that's kind of, that's kind of how I got to that one. So you just wanted to do it and you stumbled into one and, you're well, like, there's it's hard to find guy, or whatever. Some guy came up to me on the golf course and said, "You should compete in competitions." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, this is just as I'm in m- amateur mustache mode. This is like, you know, I've been growing my mustache for like eight years, and this was like maybe two years in when I just started getting curls. Um, so that that was like six years ago. And then you know, once you meet the community, go to a competition, and uh, like just get it, you, you know. It's uh, it's something special. I uh, I can I completely agree. Uh, there, there's just something about this entire community that's extremely special to a lot of people, and I'm glad you're in it now. because well, you're a delight. I and, <laughs> and that that's leading into what I'm what I'm about to say too about like there there's certain certain mm-hmm. moments in being involved in this community that just like are like these fantastic moments and one of my most fantastic moments so far in the, in being involved in the whole thing for over a decade was judging with the two of you guys in was that fort worth mm-hmm. dude i had fourth so, of july mm-hmm. that was like one of the my favorite competitions i've ever been to and, yep. and just sitting next to you like the whole entire night like you are like one of my all time. I like, I love you, dude. Like you are one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. guys in the community. You're, you, you just, you exude so much positivity and just like, as people keep writing in the chat about how amazing you are and how nice you are and just how sweet you are. I mean, you are just one of the most genuinely just terrific people I've ever met in my life. And you've like, tremendously touched me and you're i i can't i I mean i can't think of words to like you know you're getting me to stumble right now (laughs) god's in love with you my sister always says that she goes how do you just wake up you know excited and happy every day and i'm just like i don't know you know you just kind of i just try to put good energy out there it's kind of just you know, when you put it out there, you'll just see the whole world change around you. And, and, I agree. and then you see it go, you know, affect other people. And, you know, it's it's all about just lifting everybody up because, you know, you never really know what somebody's actually going through like or, that. you know, yeah, lift it up, <laughs> you know. So you just try to be be nice to everybody, like especially like if I'm at a restaurant and the waiter messes up or anything and and gives me the completely wrong order. I don't even really say anything. You know, I know they're, they're at work. They probably don't want to be there. You know, like I just try to be good to everybody around me 
and, and uh, yeah, you you're good to people, and then people yeah. will be good to you in return. Yeah, yeah I mean. <clears throat> I'll go out of my way to do anything for you, buddy. Like you, you're just one of those guys that like, and, and I hope that like you stay in this community for a long time because you're very inspiring and, you know, especially, you know, you, you so deserved what you got this past weekend in Casper. I mean, like, I cannot give you enough kudos for this. And, uh, you know, I, I've, you've been like one of the guys that I've really wanted to get on the show for like a long time. Like you've been like, like one of those like gets for me. And like, as Aaron and I were kind of talking about like, you know, who should we have on? And like, you were just right there in my head. I'm like, God, we, I would love to have him on, but like now he's like too famous and he's not, he's no, not going to spend time with us. It, it, no matter what, if I ever got famous or whatever you want to call it, I'd, I'd never treat people differently. And, you heard it and here first. That that was the coolest thing about it is even just like messaging you after and just like I tried to respond to all the messages I was getting to just, you know, I responded to there was more people that texted me this weekend than on my birthday. And I mean, it was it was crazy. And I just tried to, you know, communicate with everybody and just say thank you. Like it was a big deal, dude. You yeah. you freaking did it like you're you are at the peak of your your competitive world, you, you mastered it. And it was, it was, it was an honor to watch you win. Honestly, it was, it was super cool. Like, honestly, I didn't think a mustache was going to win best in show. That's, you know, that's not usually how these things shake out. So once I saw, uh, Goble get pulled, I was like, well, Goble is going to win, but dude, you freaking did it. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> awesome. I called my mom after I said, I don't even know what just happened. You know, and the first picture that I posted was just me uh, with all the lights on after just standing there with the big ribbon. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you guys just wait till I share what just happened. I didn't even know how to express it, but mm -hmm. the photos um, really do it justice. Um, there's just some great photos to share like that actual moment. Um, so I, I'm, I was excited when I got to see those. So let's get to the really important question that everybody wants to know. How do you spell mustache? Oh, well, when a lot of people come up to me and say mustache, like you have a great mustache. I'm just like, you're saying it right. Um, I always love to put the O in there, but I would say uh, the John O is the O in mustache. Uh, no, uh, I usually do. A, a you need a t-shirt with that. That's a there. freaking t-shirt, 100%. Yeah, M M U S T A C H E. That's that's usually how I do it. But with the O in there, I'd say it's a little more proper. Mm -hmm. You know. So which uh, way do you usually spell it without I the usually O? Do, I usually do without the O. Yeah. Okay. Well, I always do it with the O. So you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you need to. It just because apparently this is what I told Matt. Apparently, I told Matt he was wrong. So that's where that came from. <laughs> That's awesome. So what's what's next on the agenda for you? Have you been like has have any like press like reached out to you for interviews or I mean other than us, but um I mean other Honest, than that, like what what's 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 your next goal? What's your next thing? I, I don't know what my next goal is. Honestly, I I I have a goal to really connect more with the mustache community like um like levi and the whole death grip gang mm -hmm. i definitely want to help him do what, what he's trying to do um because he's in colorado not too far from my sister um and you know anything i could do to just help anybody's brand um that's just that's my goal just help i just want to see everybody do well so but speaking com of, of competition wise i'm asking though competition wise um i don't know i really don't have any on the agenda this one was really it's kind of like when you you try to go so you you want to go somewhere and then you get there but you don't have what's next planned you know mm -hmm. uh, so i guess worlds is, worlds is probably uh the next on the agenda um if there's any competitions i can go to in between that's cool um when I when I when I lived in Indiana, it was easy to bounce around to, you know, Cincinnati, Louisville, Fort Wayne, Chicago. It was it was I really had a lot of touch of it. Um, but now I'm in Arizona. I'm not really sure if there's a group out there. 
There's uh, a couple groups out there. Oh, there's Indian states in Arizona, and there's an Arizona yeah. beard mob, but I don't know what they're even doing anymore. But you know, you, there's a couple into it. dormant type beer clubs that maybe you could get shaken up and and get them going again. Go ahead, might, Scott. Score. Might I suggest one of the uh, most fruitful clubs that attended the uh, national championships? Mm. I mean, Aaron, please sell them on this. Yeah, so you could just join Talking Beards of the club, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, tell we me don't... more about it. I heard it on stage. Yeah, dude, there was like 22 <laughs> of us there. I know, and, right? and most of all of us announced it on stage, and I think 16 or 18 of us walked home with a ribbon. So that's Pretty We're much looking for a mustache beard club of all time, I think. So, you know, I'm just saying <laughs> we're, we're looking for a good mustache guy, you know, that's awesome. That's and, awesome. And the thing is, is talking beards, the club is really, it's, it's not anything like super formal. I mean, we're, it's just, yeah, we're right. there for we're a good extremely time. Extremely formal. Oh, sorry. Pardon me. Yeah. We're the most formal beard club in existence. I'm pretty sure. So super professional. You don't need cool. to wear a tie. You can. <laughs> anyway so earlier you said something about wanting to help brands like levi's so yeah. uh, that kind of goes along with what you have going on in in your non-competitive beard life uh tell us about your your company yeah so i started a marketing company uh six years ago um and i used to do a lot of photo and video work but then i partnered with somebody who builds websites because you know you can do a shoot for a brand but then the photos just go on social media and then in one month, nobody even sees your photos again. Mm -hmm. So I was a little frustrated by that. And I said, how can these photos go further? So when you build a website and use that content, I mean, your photos are seen by a lot more. Um, and then you could really help brands instead of using like stock images and things like that. You can actually capture who they are, what they do and help tell their story. Um, so my mom's got a boutique store. I used to do, you know, some photo and video for her every time I'd go in there. And it's just like helping, helping people, you know, bring their brand together. A lot of times people get caught just running their business and it's hard for them to promote it. But for me, like an outside perspective, um, you I just bring ideas to the table. Um, and that's what I, that's really what I enjoy do. So that's what I do full time. I, I run a marketing company. So to a lot of brands, when you bring in these hot new ideas, do, are they usually, you know, they take your ideas or do they use, do you get a lot of pushback? Um, I wouldn't say I get too much pushback. Um, they're just excited that I'm excited. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun to, to make a power wash company look cool or right. like a concrete company look cool. Like that, that's our goal. Um, but do you, do you, now you have this extra little asterisk next to your name like national champion yeah like, boy everyone will be like whoa we want to work with this guy now he obviously yeah. knows something well it's pretty funny i'm grabbing my business card all my business cards have a mustache on them so Smart. yeah it's it's people remember me when i come around again and uh it's always just a good it's always just a a good icebreaker. How on earth does someone not remember you after meeting you? That's the big question. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I bring a lot of energy to the table. Some people, you know, can soak it in and some people are like, this is too much energy. But, you know, I was just, I always just try to be myself and, you know, to everybody. That's better than trying to be like Aaron. Yeah. Way better. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even have a mustache. You got more <laughs> than a mustache. Kind of better than me. I mean, mine's, I've been working on mine for a while. It'll never be as good as yours, though. Like it goes down instead of up. Yeah. What kind of? All right. So what you might just be curling it the wrong way. You know, sometimes you go forward, sometimes you run it back. I don't curl it though. I just brush it just out. So how about this? What kind of tips could you give me? Like, I mean, let, Ooh, let's see. Well, you want me to go run grab uh, my round brush and a blow dryer and show you? <laughs> You don't have to go to that extent, but like, I mean, like for anyone who wants to try think, to have, I think a lot of people with mustaches, though, I have this big part in the middle. A lot of people want to get a round brush and go around this way, you know, and run the curl this way. And then all of a sudden this curl comes from the back. See, I just changed the whole dynamic of the curl. So yeah, I actually might look a little better right now. But, uh, <laughs> but when I originally said it, I, I always go from the outside this way, um, and get it to go this because, 
Because the biggest problem with mustache is, is the curls falling forward. If they fall back, they'll they'll hold on your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when so. you compete, you just kind of push them forward a little bit. But it it's different trying to push them back because then they're just wanting to fall forward again. Yeah, yeah. see, mine just con- consistently wants to just – it goes – it does like a – it goes up and then down. Like I can never get this side. Like it's just I don't know. That's just the way. I'm. Mean, that's the way you my hair grows. It, Scott, you got shut up, Aaron. You it. Do you have a round brush? No, I got well, a square one. Need so you need a round brush. I found out from uh, the girl who cut my hair for a while. Went to school with her. She got me a round brush that was a one inch round brush. And the thing with the barrel is metal. So the more heat that you put on it, you're actually heating the comb or the the whole brush. So it essentially is turning into like a mild curling iron, you know, as the, the more you're hitting it with heat. So you Do want you, it, that's the question. You want to put the heat on the brush, not your mustache. Well, no, you'll put it on, you'll be putting it on the mustache, but as you're hitting it, hitting the comb, it's heating the barrel. All right. Yeah. Do you ever use uh, curlers or do you always use a, oh, you know, I bought a bunch of curlers from Amazon where they give you those packages of all sizes. <laughs> yeah. There's and like I, a thousand of them in there. And I've tried to, uh, I've tried to do that. That didn't really work. Sometimes I would just like hold it like this for a while. And, you know, if you look at some of my early years with my mustache, my curls were going a hundred directions. Um, I couldn't really figure it out. And, and the way that a lot of the, the, styled mustache guys they put so much product in that i don't mm-hmm. even i don't even know how they do it you know like the way bob uh can get his uh mustache to look like i i don't know if i don't have the patience or i haven't figured it out but it's a uh, it's a lot of work and then when you get the product out you're just pulling so many hairs with it and those those are valuable So you don't like, it's perfectly fine for you to be in a natural category and use a blow dryer and a brush. No, no judges has ever been like, well, that's kind of a styling aid. Has that ever, anything like that ever been said to you? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's a styling aid because there's nothing in it that's holding it. I mean, this, this, this is just in it, you know, um, would you consider a styling aid? No, not at all. But I have heard people with that argument in life that, you know, oh, well, you're using a blow dryer. That's a styling aid. Well, a styling aid's like hairspray or something. But I just yeah. didn't know if if anybody, like, while you've been judged in a natural category, have they been like, that's well, not that's not natural because it's got curls yeah. or whatever. And, and that brings up a good point. I was, I was actually concerned a bit going in because I was like, I actually have, like, a handlebar mustache. You know what I mean? And yeah. there was, like, a handlebar category. And I was like are they going to give it to the person whose mustache looks the most natural or, you know, whose mustache looks the best without product in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, uh, that was definitely a concern of mine as well. Well, and that's uh, like one of my questions I want to actually bring up to Aaron. Cause like, all right. So Andrew won, uh, in styled goatee, right now, what's the difference between Shaked or shaped Shaped what's the difference between the shaped goatee and then the goatee under and over 18 so it it was a it was a distance from the earlobe to the beginning of the beard line so his was earlobe to the beard line was three inches and so over 18 and under 18 the gap was an inch and a half from the earlobe to the to the beard line so then what would the difference be between like as he's saying about the handlebar mustache and like i mean if your handlebar I would, must i would assume the handlebar would be a styled it has to have product in it for it to be a handlebar i mean i guess you probably could have entered the handlebar category if you wanted to but a handlebar guy couldn't com- be in your category because he yeah. has styling aids but yeah. if you want to kind of handicap yourself really and put yourself in another category you probably would have been fine but i would have nailed it with hairspray and this thing wouldn't have moved an inch i wouldn't yeah. have been able to go like this this thing you'd be able to catch fish from my curl it'd be so hard prove it <laughs> yeah, christmas time this is when everybody wants you to put ornaments in your beard and your mustache oh, so do, yeah. you, do you ever do that i think i did it one time yeah. i put two in my mustache and then i hung them around my hat it was fun Isn't, that's so adorable I'm just kind of get with the holidays. You got to, you know, I've, I've put the little ornament things in my beard when I've, I've done Christmas parades and stuff. It's, but 
it's that time of year that we're all going to get tagged in those Christmas ornaments over and over and over oh, again. Yeah. Like people that you went to middle school with, they're like, he has a beard. All right, I've seen it on Facebook. I'm tagging these ornaments. He's going to like it. So how much do you play with your mustache throughout a given day? Or is it just kind of there? Not much. I know that I just twisted it a bunch of ways and here we are on camera. So I'm just trying to make it look the best that it can. But um, I really just set it and forget it. Um, The, the funny thing is, is what, how I think I did well in, um, in Wyoming is I don't use cold air after when I use like warm air with the blow dryer and then hit it to cold to hold it. Yeah. But the second I walked outside, it was so dang cold. My mustache just like locked. I feel like I could feel it, you know? Um, Do you general genuinely or generally not use cold on a day-to-day basis at all? No, I I don't think I've ever even clicked the cold button. Why, why not? I just, I, I mean, honestly, every time you go to an event, you start learning so much talking to the community about like some of the stupidest things, like using cold air. Like, how did I not know that? I feel like an idiot, you know? Um, the, there's, yeah, I, I learned, we're, we're all learning stuff like decades into this. I mean, you know, it's crazy. Here you go, Scott Sikora. Here's here's your definition to read. You love reading. I know. Natural mustache. Judges will be looking for a natural mustache with no style and aids present. The mustache must not begin growth from uh, the skin at a distance further than uh-huh. three quarters inch beyond the corner of the wearer's mouth. Any length of mustache hair is accepted. Handlebar mustache. The styled mustaches will be expected to have single open curl or loop on both sides. All hair growing for from more than three quarters an inch past the corner of the mouth must be shaved. Yep. You see how it says M O U S T A C H E. I'm just I'd like. Well, that's that's why I was reading it. So the many way I was people, it. a lot of people, a lot of mustaches will start like down here, and they'll be mm-hmm. a part of it, and then they just look ginormous. You know. Um, I've seen a bunch of full beard styled stash dudes pull from their beard like that. Yeah. MJ That's like a, a whole mustache. Yeah, MJ <laughs> completely cheats. I'm pretty sure he pulls some beard hair in his mustache. Like, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he does. Dude, his his style is iconic, man. It What's is like what like Sean what well, Sean, Sean Rager from mm-hmm. years ago who doesn't compete anymore, but he had his was he his mustache, like he did that. He grew it down like this but his came down and like he grew it out like really long it looked like a mustache but it was all like basically a fu manchu but really long and he styled it to like literally almost look very similar to like what you have but yeah no it's it your mustache is just beautiful thanks that a comment just popped on on how you know girls talk more about styling than than men do but you know i think we're a pretty strong force coming alive and and there's just only more momentum behind the community um you know i had a friend in casper that i stayed with and and she's like had no clue what she was going to and then after she was like this is amazing you know because half the time i'm uh, you know when you're there you're like yeah i met this person in virginia i met this person in texas i met this person in uh san antonio and just like when the whole community comes together, I mean, it's just, it's just a special thing. There's nothing Absolutely. better than seeing people, you know, yeah, or people for, you don't know. Yeah, that too. That that's true too. And it, you're it, such a friendly guy. You probably make a hundred new friends at all these events too. Yeah. I mean, all the, all the bearded guys, the big bearded guys, those are, those guys are so soft right here. They're, they're all like, <laughs> I'm like, I always go up to him and I always say, man, I wouldn't want to uh, go against you in an arm wrestle. That's what I say to all the big dudes. Yeah, but you're a mustache guy. So that's like what y'all do. You arm wrestle. <laughs> and you like wear the hat. And you a stand knife like fight. this. That's all mustache people do constantly. And then they're like, oh, I know. I'm really a nice guy. And I'm like, no, I know. I know. So, What's up, Dan C? Yeah. I, well, I was, Dan, I was this is the guy with... you need to get on your show to talk about mustaches. National yeah, he, champion Dan right C here. was supposed to come to nationals, but he uh he had some family stuff come up and he wasn't able to make it. But that was that was gonna be a lot of fun having having that dude there. I yeah. so uh, one of the questions you guys said, like, is I, am I getting a bunch of press attention and mm-hmm. stuff for the mustache? Honestly, 
uh, I think the world record, the Guinness world record slammed that out the door. Dude, uh, that it has gone everywhere today. It, it was on Fox news, like regular I mean, old Fox news. People, people were, were screenshotting people were talking it. Talking to me about it at the dog park today. They're like, yeah, it was on NPR today. I heard about the beard chain, blah, 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 blah. And like, <laughs> I, I was like, this is just, this is incredible. Yeah, just um, wait till those uh, Greg Anderson pictures come out. It's going to be like round two of this thing. It's like the the beer chain was maybe the the appetizer for what's what's to come. Yeah, that's what I no, think. Greg, and Greg definitely really sends those pictures out there, and a lot of people grab a hold of them. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely since you are the tip top of the iceberg of the weekend uh, as competitor wise, your picture is going to definitely be. I mean, you might be. Uh, people's sexiest man alive next year <laughs> probably it'll be like this <laughs> sexiest man alive right there see they're all pointing at you yeah you Josiah, he's clean cut you got levi right there you got you got just a bunch of good people you got natalie in there it's awesome that natalie's that, mustache was bigger than yours though <laughs> <laughs> so this that, that guy can you go back to that picture yeah the guy in the blue shirt i've mm-hmm. never uh, not on the other side with the vest, uh, the silver vest. I've yep, never yep. seen somebody's beard start so high on their it's face. It's like at his eyeballs. It's It was the most incredible thing I've ever that seen. That guy what? is super nice. I talked to him several times all weekend. He is like the the voice of Casper. I guess he does. he's done radio stuff. He's done yeah. TV stuff. He he does announcers. like, And he's just been running the, the gauntlet of local Casper – media today he i talked to him a little bit ago and he's done like four or five interviews today for local casper stuff uh, oh so he he, he was a local guy that that was his first guy competition. he won friday night he won saturday night he wants to wow. start a beard club like that dude is all about it like i think there's going to be uh a yes. casper beard club very soon after this event I, I was uh that's what i was worried about honestly going to wyoming i'm like what rancher is just going to come out of the woods and just smoke the mustache cat. Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised. That's what all. I was waiting for. Mm, but it happened in the full beard category, obviously. You were you were yeah. safe. Yeah, but um Adam Smalley, that guy, he's uh that that's a he's a good dude. Um man, he gave me hot sauce uh from Alabama. He gave me syrup and he was just uh it, that's what it's about. It's just going to these competitions and then you can just build the greatest friendships with new people. Mm-hmm. You, you are right. It's not just about seeing who you know, but meeting, meeting more people, meeting new people from anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. And then you've just got friends everywhere. And it it's, it's wild. It, this whole, this whole beard thing is just super wild. How it all works. <clears throat> well, all right. I think well, that pretty well wraps it up. You got anything else you want to add there? John O. Um, uh, a lot of people said stuff about my hat. I actually made this hat, which is cool. Um, I like to make hats. People have always like wanted them. I, I haven't had the capacity to really sell them and make them for everyone. Uh, I think it'd be so cool to just hook a bunch of people up in the community with them and, and be a cool resource. I want um, you to make my first cowboy hat. So now that I'm in Texas and I need to get a cowboy hat, I think we, we could work together on making something cool. Yeah, it'd be cool. You know, cause like this brim originally was this big, you trimmed it down, put on like a, you know, uh, almost like a little Western brim and like a Western fedora. That's what I like to call this look, but everybody has their own styles and it's kind of cool how you can almost make a hat like to somebody's facial hair or, you know, who they are. It's they're, they're all original. So um, that's the only thing we didn't touch base on. It's been, it's been fun. Um, everybody's, you know, and a lot of people said stuff about my hat. So that was, well, you've got, was, you've got Scott, Aaron and Natalie here uh, on, on your wedding list when you start <laughs> creating, right. hats, we'll yeah. put us down for, for uh, some creations of yours. Yeah, that's fun. But no, overall, I, I I really appreciate what you guys do for the community. I mean, this is the uh, the hundred and ninetieth show, is it? One ninety one of and, the live show, two hundred and sixty nine yeah. of the podcast. Scott like, started before we started this guy. And, and like seriously, like the amount of work that it takes to set up the lighting, the microphone, going live on YouTube, Facebook, um, just like everything that goes into 
a podcast. Like I, I, it, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon and you guys are, you guys are, are champs at it. So kudos to you guys for really putting a, a spotlight on the community, not only the competitions, but you know, in, in the long run, you know, we got, you got comps and then you got podcast, podcast, podcast comps. And you know, it's, it's cool. So for people who are trying to really figure it out and, and know what the community is about, you just watch one podcast and you're, and you're pretty much up to date. Well, thank you for those kind words. That was, that yeah. was cool. I appreciate that. No, I, I, I appreciate that too. I mean, yeah, it, it is, it's been, it, it's been a labor of love for years. I mean, and there are moments when you feel like, man, what do we talk about tonight? But then it like comes in these like weird ebbs and flows where it's like, too much to cover too much like, like tonight we before the show me and scott were like i don't know we'll just kind of wing it and see what happens yeah. and then you know we we could have went on for 15 20 more, more minutes about your hat yeah. so yeah <laughs> we could went on all all night about just the guinness world record you know yeah, absolutely I yeah mean, there there can- are so many things happening in the community as of lately that there's just like like our <clears throat> october uh show where we had covered almost 17 different events that were going on in the month of October. I mean, there's a lot of five weekends. That's it. (laughs) And it's 17, 18 events. It's it's we do have like, I think an or of 15 orders for hats going on in the chat room. right now. See, there you go. I I got a page just wild man. J U S T wild man. That's, that's kind of like my hat page. I'll, I'll try to get deeper into it. It's a lot of work. This hat- it sounds like you just picked up a lot more business tonight. So that's fun. I'd love to have a hat booth, you know, and be at these events. You know, I, I want to, I want to, you know, get donations up for competitions. I want to, I want to keep partying. I'm, I'm down to be a judge. When I, when I was asked to be a judge in uh, Texas, that was a treat. And then hanging out with you guys on stage was a whole different perspective of the whole competition. I mean, being a judge is just so much fun. It's it just is. so much fun. And I, I really hope, you know, this win this weekend really uh, makes some clubs, you know, want to reach out and, and, and verifies me as a, a, a good judge. Um, well, you are definitely certified in knowledge of mustaches and all beards that, I mean, anyone should be honored to have you as a judge for, I mean, I, if, if we were hosting one, I would have you as a judge. There you go. Yeah, sure. it's cool. I don't want to get overwhelmed with it, but you know, it's it is a fun. It's just it's so fun to do. Um, as long as me and my dog could travel there, that's uh, that's that's good. Or I'll just board him. I found a good place to board my dog. It's an indoor dog park in Arizona, and it's it's the it's a twenty thousand square foot facility. So wow. And he's a wild dog, but they have a whole indoor indoor park for him. So he goes there and has so much fun. So he's just running amok. I got a good slide. Dog, shout out to MacPack AZ. <laughs> we built their website. It's awesome. But yeah, cool. Well, Jono, I appreciate you being on the show. And uh, yeah, dude, we uh, we have a spot for you. We'll we'll bring you back some other time, and we'll we'll just chat it up some more. You're you're yeah, just a, a wealth have to of come back. conversation. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck in everything that's going to happen from here on out in your life. And just, you know, make sure you enjoy the ride of all the changes that your life is going to have from here on out. Enjoy all the, uh, the Japanese media that you're going to be doing tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, honestly, my biggest thing, and I haven't really put it out there, but like when you lead with your heart, your, your whole world will change. And, uh, it's, gotten me here so uh i'm gonna keep doing that and and we'll see what's to come you do you man it's it's obviously working out for you cheers appreciate it have a good night all All right right. congratulations again bud yeah congratulations appreciate it wow that was fun god he's that was our whole show i know we did it we did we more than we more than did it (sighs) well I, that pretty well wraps up the show. Um, one thing I was going to touch on a little bit earlier and I kind of forgot. Uh, don't forget to, uh, you know, go over to honestamish.com, not necessarily.com. Go to the Facebook page and, and look at this picture and follow the instructions. All you got to do is send me a email for No Shave November Beard Contest. That's super easy. Pick a category, send me a picture, be involved, and, you know, 
We'll pick some winners at the end of the month. We'll post your picture and I'll send you some stuff. That's pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, uh, make sure uh, you guys get on that. We're halfway through the month right now, so you you have uh, 15 days. Yeah, 15 days to get that in, to get it in by the end of the month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like we said, just go to honestamish.com or go to the Honest Amish Facebook page. Um, end, of, but, end of the month, Matt, just at midnight, whatever the last day, 31st or 30th, whatever yeah, the end 31st. of the month is. 31st, that's it. So, <clears throat> And also... Well, speaking of honest Amish for all of you uh, who are interested in, in what we're getting into that time of year where uh, Christmas is coming up and the holidays are coming up. And if you guys are looking for some great uh, gifts for any of your mustache or bearded friends or women in your life, we have soaps and salves and lip balms, all those great things. Uh, make sure you use the promo code talking beards when you're checking out to get 15% off your order. And we're going to have free shipping on orders of $35 or more. So go to honestamish.com and uh, look at that. Brian Nelson is texting us. Goodness. We're live so- on our show live on the show, but yeah, everybody, thank you for uh, watching and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Check out talkingbeards.com. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe, like, hey, follow, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Boost, all those boost, stuff. The podca- boost the podcast over on the Fountain app. Thanks, yeah. Vegan Al. For always doing good. Thank you, guys, everyone, and uh, we shall see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at talkingbeards.com.